on, buddy. Hey, man. How are you? How's it going? It's going good. We're just going to pretend like we haven't already been talking for an hour. Yeah, it's not like we've... No, this is the first time we've actually contacted... The first time I've seen you ever. Ever. Yeah, Yeah, ever. It's weird. It's like we just kind of... There was a cosmic uh, connection. It was just like, whoa, dude. How are you doing tonight? It's uh, what is it? What is tonight? Tonight, what day wise? Yeah, day wise. What is it? Uh, Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. yeah, yeah. Well, welcome to the age of rage where we don't know what fucking day it is. I love that. Yeah, it's certainly uh, strange times. Um, <laughs> we can we can get into that. Um, Fuck yeah. What's yeah, so uh? Let's talk about this. Why why are we doing this? What are we doing here? What are we fucking doing here? With the podcast? Oh, it's a good question. I um, I don't know. I think this is just uh, an outlet as much as it is entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think that not even necessarily venting, but just talking uh, about life or experiences or the age that we live in. Uh, can has a, a therapeutic value to it, so I think this is just, um, and and that's also the reason why people respond to um, uh, to people who do talk about these types of things because we, especially during these times, we all feel a lot of the same ways. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as uh, isolation and anxiety about the future and the depression of now. It's, it's all, it's, it's a fucking ride, but the unique thing about it is we're all in it as, as, uh, not just the country, but the globe. The whole world. Yeah. The whole, I, that's what, that's what's interesting to me about this experience. Uh, this, this shit we're going through, uh, is simply that I, you know, I'll talk to my friends in London and I'll be like, Oh, how's things going? And it's literally the same thing, or at least close, or at least there's an understanding. And mm-hmm. you can talk almost any country. You can, you, you know, almost like New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting because I I I've had the similar experience um, streaming. Talk to my friend from London. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. My God. You don't know Lyle? Of course I know. Lyle. That's his name, right? Anyway, no, no, no. Uh, I've had. <laughs> I've had this, uh, you know, the same experience uh, streaming on Twitch because I, I, there's been a bunch of people that have popped in the chat, and of course, COVID comes up because how is it not in any conversation? Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 become like the new weather conversation. You know, oh, it's can't believe it was 58 degrees six months ago, and you're like, and you're like, oh, you know, remember when we could do things? It's just like a good way to make small talk with people now. Yeah, yeah. I I don't I think we all go through our like oh, I miss this or I miss that and I I I was thinking the other day cuz and I think you and I have talked about this in the past is uh although we've never met before and this is a No, not at all. Each other, obviously. Here are you? But uh oh, join join. Um <laughs> I remember uh I was I was just thinking of the past year and I was thinking I, I, I was walking through Vons, I was getting my Starbucks with my mask and I heard a song by um, Dermot Kennedy who was a singer. I had no idea who this dude was. No idea. I discovered him because he played at Amoeba Records and okay. I took my kid. We went to see this amazing show and it was just fucking beautiful and he had this, uh, he's got this Irish accent so he's like uh, you know, you hear the little the little hint of of his Irish or Scottish. I don't know one of those. Um, but he, I don't know. I, I heard that song and I thought of that. And I thought of that moment. And I'm like, wow, I, I do miss that. I miss that kind of I don't know, like the reaching out to be. And you know, I'm you know the hugs. I I get sad that I can't. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's I, I miss that. I miss live music. I miss mm. I miss theaters. But I but with my job, I'm still kind of in, pretty active. You know, I'm still watching movies. Mm-hmm. I'm still doing interviews. So I don't. Weirdly enough, I don't miss movies as much as maybe 
your average Joe who maybe wanted to see Tenet in the theater or yeah. Bill and Ted in the theater. This um, guy. Oh yeah, I mean, look, yeah. I, I, I want it. I want that too, dude. But yeah, like, oh god, we can talk about Bill and Ted. Oh my god. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. I. It's funny because when they, when they, well, the thing is, is that when they release those things digitally to rent, because it's a movie that you know would be in theaters right now, it's a, it's twenty dollars to rent it for like twenty five to buy though. It's one, which is like, which is stupid because I, I mean, it makes it to where you might as well buy it, but I don't want to buy it. Bill and Ted, I might buy, it, but most of it, it's like I just wanted to check it out, like I would at the movie theater. But, yeah. but yeah, when I think of things that. I can't wait to do again once all this shit blows over in five years. Um, it's, it's mainly, it's mainly uh, movies and uh, uh, live music because I, I think those were the two biggest uh, hobbies that I had, like as far as going out, you know? Yeah. 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 No, we, and we're, I mean, I think we definitely had that because I, I know we've talked a lot about movies and that we love movies. We love music. We both love live music. I, I, I definitely miss live music more. I, dude, we had yeah. so many. We, we were going to go see the same, even though, again, we had never met before. All right. I, we were going to go see, we were going to be at the same show. We were going to be at the Alkaline Trio Bad Religion show. Yeah. And that was on my birthday. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I just like and and I I've always I got really really into Alkaline Trio just within the last few years and the idea of seeing them live it's like it's 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 like that's you know there's a lot of cool shows but there's some shows that are on your bucket list and that one was on there and I'm like finally I can cross it out and I get to see Bad Religion you know this legendary punk band so it was yeah. It was gonna be a kick-ass show. I hopefully they reschedule it with them two together at the same place. But um, originally they did. I thought I could have sworn we got we got in a message saying, "Oh yeah, no, we're gonna have it the same day a year later." I, I swear to God, wait, we got maybe. That. But now they're saying then, like a few weeks after that, it was suddenly no, we cancel all the shows. Like, yeah, yeah. God. I wanted to go, dude. I. I say I'm lucky. I've seen Alkaline Trio fucking several times. I've met Matt. I've met the band. Wow. Yeah. It was I went to I was I was a weirdo because I, I I discovered them through Good Morning and that album. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's that, a good album. That's that's just sort of a I feel like an uncommon album to that people discover Alkaline with. Usually, it's like. Mm -hmm. Uh, from here to infirmary, or uh, maybe I'll catch fire or something. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, well, it was you know it was one of those things, and I I just I I bought two albums that day, and I don't remember what it was. It was that and something else, and I I remember the other album I liked more at the time, but then Alkaline kept kind of like I I didn't really give it as much of a chance. So I, I mm. had this album, I had this. CD. It was back when they, you know, we actually had CDs, and I remember like finally putting it on, and I was like, "Huh, this is good. This is really good." Now, I so I joined the fan club. I literally joined the fucking wow. Alkaline Trio fan club, and the the, the reason I did because they they actually, I don't know if they still do this, but. I don't know if they still have a fan club. I, I let my... I, yeah, I, it's funny. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. Every CD that you would buy would come with a little, little pamphlet to join yeah. their fan club. Yeah, yeah. And they, dude. And they were good deals because they would offer you f tickets first, first come, first. You know, like like when they were available, you could get them really, really quickly. And they always had meet and greet for the mm. shows. And yeah. So, yeah, I remember it was fucking cool. You'll you'll dig this. I hope the audience will too. The the, the two of you guys watching. Yeah. Um, I I remember it was so surreal because I'm standing there and it's just me and this group of people. And there was only ten people, um, I think maybe. And they're playing, so we got to watch them play. And then Matt Skiba's doing his thing, and he looks down at the uh, down at me, and because I'm kind of over to the side, and he's like, "Fuck, man." Did you guys see some kind of monster that Metallica documentary? And I literally just watched it. I loved that movie. Yeah. I was like 
oh my god, dude. I we got, And so he literally jumped off the stage. We start having this conversation about it. Wow. Him. It was surreal. And this was well before my years of being like, Mr. I talk to celebrities a lot. Yeah. That's what I do for my job. That's my job. But uh, yeah, I was, I'll was. i never forget that, dude. And, and uh, Dan was great. But uh, Derek was really sweet. Like, weirdly, like, just, he was sweeter than I thought he'd be. I, I, I like that. That was a good show. I, bummer. That, I wish you could have seen them. I didn't know you hadn't seen them before. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely on the bucket list. And uh, speaking of some kind of monster, did you see the follow-up documentary that they did? Because no. when they put, they put some kind of monster on Netflix over the past, I don't know, sometime during the past few years, and along with that came with like a follow-up documentary. Oh, sure. Where where they talk about where it's like a documentary where the members talk about that documentary they talk about that time in the band and they compare it and they kind of talk about how it is now. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I like it. It was really I, good. Okay, I'll watch that. So yeah, I, obviously you saw some kind of monster. Mo- yes, I own it. I think. I do too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a really I was really big into Metallica for a while, and I, I still yeah. like them. But. Yeah, I, the best concert, and look, I've been to dozens of concerts. The best one I've ever been to was Metallica at Soldier Field in Chicago because oh a Metallica stadium show is something else. It is an experience like no other, and wow. they really go all out for it. So, well, they're a, they're an incred- incredible live band. The, yeah, yeah, they're they're uh, real road dogs. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, when did you see them? Um, well, the first time I saw them was in 2009. Uh, that was just um, oh, just a little like venue. Ooh. I almost flipped my laptop over. Um, <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, and that that was a cool show because the opening act was a band called Down, which uh, for people that don't know, the singer and the bassist in that band are the singer and the bassist of Pantera. Oh, and at good. the time, I was going through my Pantera phase, and I didn't realize that they were in the band that I was watching, and I lost my fucking mind. So, oh yeah. Yeah, and um, so, yeah, but the stadium show was in 2017. Um, it was after, uh, what, what the hell is it? The most recent one. I forgot what it's called. Oh, um, no. Yeah, I know. I, I know which one, and I can't remember. Yeah. Um, Two of you, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I went with a friend, and and the opening. So the warm up band was a band called Local H. Oh, and, I love Local H. Yeah. 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 I High five and motherfucker. I, yeah, dude. I have that whole <laughs> album, and and it's and and I like it. I like. I mean, I think they, they they were one of those bands that, especially during the time, they just got written off as like a Nirvana clone or Nirvana wannabe. But especially that song "Bound for the Floor." I mean, that still gets played on radio stations. So good. Yeah, they actually had a couple decent records too. They had yeah. a, one. Uh, um, I can't remember the title, but I know it. Either there was a song "PJ Souls" or the album, and there was a song called yeah. "PJ Souls," which is "PJ Souls." You know who PJ Souls is? I do not. You know Halloween? Yeah. The original? The original, okay. See anything you like? That chick. That's oh, that. she's okay. That, and she's lovely and she's awesome and she's a beautiful human being. And um, they, uh, yeah, they, they, put, they named her. I think I talked to PJ Souls about that record. Wow. Yeah, yeah I, I, um, I've liked them and uh, it's, it was cool to see him live. That was such a cool bonus. So I got to see all those songs live. And and it's just two dudes. So mm-hmm. it's like it's impressive what they do. And um and plus they're a, a local Chicago band. Like they're they're from Chicago. So it was cool to see them in Chicago and especially being from Illinois. It's you know, that association. And the uh opening act was Avenged Sevenfold. Oh my god. Yeah. And I love Avenged Sevenfold. I've actually interestingly enough, that is the band that I've seen the most. Really? Yeah, and it's purely by accident. Well, not by accident, but like they um, opened a lot for like uh, Right. We are, yeah, like <laughs> like uh the first time I saw them um 
they they were the headliner, but the opening act was Deftones, and I was there for Deftones for sure. And uh, second time I saw them was that Metallica show, and then the last time I actually went to see them. So, so yeah, I I really enjoy them. It's a they're, pretty stacked show. There, that that's a hell of a show. I I believe I remember that. I think I wanted to go to that show uh, specifically because I like Local H so much, and I like Metallica. I like Death Hill. I was just a great lineup. Um, but uh, yeah, I did not go, and I, I'm I'm now I'm jealous. Now I'm jealous. Yeah, I yeah for anyone for the two people listening or watching, and or, um, I would highly recommend. Uh, a Metallica stadium show. It is the ultimate concert experience. Yeah. So, well, see, I had the opposite when I saw them. I had. So, do you remember when the movie came out? Why am I? Why am I not some kind of monster? But the the video movie, the one with Dane DeHaan. Oh right, uh, through the never. Through the never. Uh, when that came out, they they pushed it heavily. On uh, oh gosh, you're gonna get super jealous. Um, so they pushed that heavily at Comic Con. So I got to interview Jim James, and I got to interview Kurt, and I got to the only one I oh, uh, and I've got a picture somewhere with me and Lars and Dane. It's, wow, it was kind of amazing. And that, yeah, that is amazing, of course. Yeah. So and I really, really like Lars. He was a real, Kurt and Lars were fucking awesome. I, oh, that's I, interesting. Yeah, I, I can't believe I've never told you this, even though we've never met before. Yeah. Um, but I remember we got specifically tickets to see them at a tiny, I think it was like a thousand people show. And it was fucking mind blowing. I'm not, I, wow. I it would probably be, be the same as seeing them, I, 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 kind of a different vibe from seeing a stadium show. But they're so powerful. It's like, oh my. Oh, God. yeah. Billions. Yeah. Fucking chills, and they played the whole show. It wasn't like a, you know, you, you Comic Con thing. Oh, it's like they're gonna do five songs. It was a whole show, and we were just like, my buddy Rusty and I. We were just like, this is just, wow. This is. The, I mean, it's one of my favorite Comic Con experiences, like, ever, ever. I fucking love it. Yeah. Well, and and that's why you know it, it was always one of my main hobbies. You know, uh, pre Corona, because it's. It's something that is relatively inexpensive, uh, but it provides you with an amazing life experience. Whereas going to the theater, it's just essentially watching a movie in public. But a, a concert really, especially if you get these people that really know how to put on a good show. And it really becomes a, a, a valuable uh, and I guess rare life experience. Yeah, well, because you know, you say, I mean, like my my musical taste has changed. I've gotten I've gotten a lot more mellow, and I've gotten a, super into um, Americana and folk and bluegrass and country, even which is especially old old country. But I did you listen to the new Avit Brothers album? No, is it good? It's very good. It's reminiscent of their older stuff. Oh, okay. I'll look into that. Okay, yeah, yeah that's probably something I'd like because I do like them. But I, my obsession, for anyone that knows me, is Brandy Carlisle. I okay. fucking love Brandy Carlisle, and I it's I discovered her. I just thought her life was interesting. She's ma she's married to her wife. She's got I forgot her wife's name at the moment. Has two two daughters. Other beautiful girls, and her music just I don't know. I've I always go through these periods where I listen to someone a lot. Like whether, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, you just you you connect something about that. You find this connection. And I guess I heard uh, she, she has a song called The Mother. And it was uh, I, I, I really got into her late. She's got like seven, eight albums. Mm. I like some of her earlier stuff. But I didn't really get into her. I didn't really know much about her. But this last uh, the last album that she released, uh, by the way, I forgive you was all about forgiveness, all about acceptance and all about kind of finding yourself and I, I think it just dude I think it it was the right time in my life and to yeah hear that to hear that those words and, and those melodies and those and, and so yeah I mean that I, it's funny because I took my um 
my my buddy who I do sound scary with. I had tickets to go see her play at this fucking. It was a big fair, but it was over in Irvine. It was our big World's Fair thing, and I was like, I didn't have it. You know, I, I asked my buddy to go. He'd never seen them. He didn't even know anything about her, right? He's just whatever. It was a free show. Yeah. So we went, and um, it took me about. This is a lot about Brandy. It took me about five songs to realize, oh shit, they don't have a band. It's literally her and her bass and guitarist. That was it. Wow. I, I didn't even. The music was so big and 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 and, and, and powerful and emotional that I mm -hmm. was just like. Fuck, and I, I, I was. What made me really happy, like over everything, was Brian comes up and he walks up to me. And he's just like, "Holy shit, that was fucking amazing!" I'm like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I and and the funny thing about you know listening to the like a certain if you connect uh, with what what you're going through a certain time in your life um, to a song or or an album or an artist or something, then it, it's funny how listening to those songs immediately brings you back to that time and you start to feel those same feelings again. And it's, it's amazing. I'm currently going through that right now with, uh, Mac Miller. Mac Miller. I know the name. I don't, I don't the, know. So he's, so he's a, a white rapper from Pittsburgh okay. and uh, he actually just recently passed away. I think two or three years ago oh, from, yeah. Yeah, he was he was only like 26, and uh, it was an accidental drug overdose. Mm. And um, but yeah, his he has such a huge and loyal fan base because, uh, you know, obviously myself included, because you know when he first came on the scene, it was he was just kind of like this. I mean, he was like 17, 18 years old, just this wow. young young white kid, just spitting raps and everything, you know, trying to trying to make a name for himself but then he evolved into this full-blown uh, incredible and genius artist like he taught himself how to play guitar taught himself how to play piano taught himself to sing a little bit and he was constantly and he has a reputation for constantly being in the studio constantly recording songs and and as his albums progressed um they got more and more like uh more heavily produced like as far as like you know them being more um uh intricate and and involved and involved like a full blown band as opposed to just beats that are playing and and uh you know there's albums that have like a lot of like funk and r and b influence and and uh especially his last couple albums um he's his music has started to break into like the indie music scene now because especially his most recent album uh circles he it's there's really nothing hip hop about it, even though he is a rapper. It's all just very atmospheric, um, folksy kind of songs. Well, I don't want to say folksy, but like you know, like an indie artist, you know. And, and the thing that's connected him to his fans so much is uh, his subject material. He he talked very openly about his depression, about his failed relationships about his drug abuse about everything and he was very vulnerable and he just connected to so many people and because he was such a young guy it's like if if you're you know his music obviously connected to a lot of younger kids because it's like you're growing up with him and you're going through these things in life with him and and he's kind of the voice that speaks for that entire experience so and that's what always attached me to his music and and especially lately um it's just been so therapeutic to listen to his music and it's it's literally every day every day i'm just it's just mac miller on all day yeah no i, I know that moment what 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 was the reason i mean how did you discover him what was the song what was the moment um it was it was years ago i think i was in high school or college um, I think I was in high school still, and um, I had always heard about him, and I had friends that listened to him, but I thought he was just like another one of these like young wannabe white rappers. It's yeah, just like gonna an be Eminem wannabe type thing. Uh, pretty much, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, just someone that's whack. And um, I listened to one song. Uh, 
because he 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 was kind of one of the first rappers to get famous from the internet like he posted oh, okay. his stuff on the internet. He po- he made his own little music videos and posted them on YouTube, and they just happened to go viral. And that's how he got a career. He was like, honestly, probably the first rapper that happened to, because this was before SoundCloud and all that shit. Mm-hmm. So, um, I I loaded up one of those songs. It was called Kool Aid and Frozen Pizza, and I was like, that's interesting. Let's listen to that one. And it had such. And I've been a huge hip hop fan my entire life, and it had such a classic um hip-hop sound to it almost like the boom bap old school east coast kind of sound which makes sense because he is from the east coast but um i don't know there were there was there was something very authentic about it immediately that i could hear right away and and especially once you kind of get more into it it's like no this guy he has real talent as a rapper and he is a true artist. And uh, not only is he, he's not just trying to prove himself, he's just trying to show you how talented he really is. And um, and then I, you know, discovered his mixtapes where he starts talking more openly about real life shit. And that's what really kind of glued me to him. How important do you think? I mean, for me, I, I think with musicians, weirdly enough, I feel like, the more truthful their stories are, whether they're, they always wonder, I, nobody, you know, you listen to an artist like that, like Mac Miller, or like Freddie Carlisle, even all of their songs are so personal. You, you go like, well, there's no way that they can be going through all of that because it's just fucking insane. No one could go through all that, but I guess, I don't know. I guess we kind of do. I think we all do. It's like, we're yeah. all kind of going through this circle of, uh, emotional turmoil yeah <laughs> yeah i want to listen to him now i'm like I, i'm actually i I'll, I'll send you i'll send you a, a handful of songs after the podcast okay okay now yeah. how, how how old was how old were you when he passed 24 wow. so he was only a couple years older than me jesus that's, yeah see, that's that's just i mean we're 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 dealing with, and I, I don't know when we'll actually air this episode. I don't know, but I mean, we gotta. I, I think we gotta talk about Chadwick Boseman. Oh yeah. You yeah. know, here we are talking about losing. Um, I don't know, losing life or, or, or losing these these stars or these not stars. I'm talking just anything. Yeah. It's such a bizarre thing, uh, and I, I don't. I don't know how, like, I'm still kind of formulating how I deal with death. I, I don't know about you, but it's, mm-hmm. it's, even as an adult who's seen a lot, I've seen death too, way too often. Um, I don't know. It's weird. It's, it's weird, but it's also, I'm in, a, I'm in a weird position where I actually got to meet Chadwick, and I actually interviewed him. Wow. Um, I, I, the, the hardest one I met... Chris Cornell a month before I loved <sighs> Down Garden. Oh, of course. I loved. I was. I that one. Yeah, that destroyed me. I mean that there. There's some of these deaths because I've gotten to. I've gotten to interview a lot of people that are not around anymore. Wow. You know, and it's it's and it's like I. It's tricky because you don't want to go and do it. I'm going to go on Facebook and talk about my five minutes with the celebrity that just died. I think that that just sounds kind of tacky, but at the same time, you, you know, I had a really, I had a really good few moments with Paul Walker. And yeah. That, that fucking, oh my God, I gotta, when he passed away, like my buddy called me and I was on my way to an event and I picked the phone on it. He's like, dude, 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 did you hear it? I'm just like, what? What? What's going on? He's like Paul Paul Walker. I'm like, no, no, don't fucking tell me that. It just it did because he was such a genuinely nice guy. Yeah. Like you don't want to. I don't know. It's like this is really heavy. Death. Obviously, we're kind of jumping into a really heavy thing, and I don't want the show to always be super heavy. But I, at the same time, it's kind of like I don't know, man. It's hearing about Mac Miller, and I remember hearing that name. Yeah. 
But yeah, it was pretty big news when he passed away. That's probably when you heard the name. What was your reaction? How did you how did you react? How did you feel? Did you have an emotional response? You know, I I mean, I didn't cry or anything, but I did get very very sad. It's it, that's sort of the special you thing with me all the time though. Uh, totally in your arms. And um oh. I uh the special thing about artists like that is that because they are so transparent in their music and you are you're able to sort of connect the dots between their life and their experiences with yours you almost feel like you know them in a, in a weird way and yeah. it, it's very strange to miss someone that you never met but that's exactly how i feel about mac miller and uh i have such a strong connection with his music and and you know he was my age yeah and yeah. um so yeah I, I was yeah it, it was it was very very sad to hear wow yeah i I remember, like now, definitely send me those songs because, like, I, I, I'd be curious to hear other people's. I, I find it interesting to to see how people deal with loss, like when it's someone famous or someone, you know, that people are a fan of. I always find it interesting, like when Kurt Cobain died and yeah. people were gathered in Seattle, and and it's such a, it's, it's a strange thing, to your own reaction, your own emotional reaction, whether you cry, whether you suddenly find yourself on iTunes getting every song that the artist did yeah. because you want to, you know, I, I did that recently with, uh, I've been, dude, I've been obsessed with Tom Petty. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Obsessed. Like between him, the past week I was listening to the night, actually the night uh, Chadwick died. I was listening to Prince all night. All my I saw that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it just, I don't know, I needed to hear a voice that kind of connected. I don't know, felt that it was the right thing, it was the right sound, it was, especially when doves cry, and then I, I watched Purple Rain. And it's weird, I didn't watch, you know, Black Panther, I, I watched Purple Rain, but, yeah. you know, it's a it's an interesting thing. It's an, Life of Death is a bizarro this is getting way too, too too deep for my head. I don't know, but that's you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You know do you want to do you want to shift away? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, but it, it, I you know we're talking about music, but we we uh, here's the thing. What I liked about and when we there, let's let's bring this up a little bit because I think it's an interesting thing to talk about. You and I have been friends for a while. Mm. Um, we uh, we talk a lot. Sure. You, I talk to you more than probably anyone, <laughs> uh, except my son. But uh, I I remember thinking about the idea of doing a podcast, and and I because I, I talk about movies all day. I talk yeah. about sometimes TV shows, maybe music, but I don't get to talk about life. And and we were doing this. We were talking. Yeah. We were finding all these beautiful little moments um of connection and i it, it just seemed like the good uh, this really good idea because we bitch about the same things we yeah we like certain you know we, we don't always we don't agree on everything and it won't be that i think i'm sure down the road we're gonna be oh yeah you like that what the fuck are you thinking <laughs> you know? yeah i can't wait honestly i'm yeah, excited I, I think it'll be fun and i think like i and i just the idea of kind of i feel like our our um, our conversations would always go to this really incredibly deep place and we would we could talk about death and we could talk about drug addiction and well shit. and that's sort of the interesting thing is that even though those all of those things are commonplace in every single body's lives and and a lot of us do share the same feelings about them but there there's so many people that they dislike it so much not even just dislike it but like to a point where they don't even want to talk about it they don't want to think about it they don't want to talk they don't want to go there and that's fine you know i i i, I believe that that is them using their better judgment so that way they don't spiral into a dark place but some people like me i can kind of dip my toe in the dark place and be like okay let's Let's get high and listen to music and calm down, you know? Yeah. So, How so, high yeah. are you at the moment, by the way? Um, I'm 
not bad. I'm scratching the surface. Good, good. David. But I'll tell you what. Oh my gosh! Yes, yes. Let's climb a little bit. Let's climb. Let's climb that ladder. I'm liking it. Yeah. No, I, I, I feel like the idea that like, you know, I, I think I originally pitched this to you as, oh, let's do like a pop culture show where we. Uh, right. Yeah, and then I was kind of thinking, and you you kind of inspired me a little bit. You were like, well, we could talk about everything. We could talk about what's mm-hmm. going on in the world. We could talk about Karens. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. Did you see the uh, – there's a new video, and hopefully this is uh, – Of course there is. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, there's – every day there's a new one. But yeah. there's one – someone took a bunch of those famous Karens – Mm-hmm. So it sounds so fucking weird. Famous Karens, fa- famous for being a fucking psycho. Yeah, um, and a fucking idiot. Fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah. And, and and they have the they, especially you know the one that's running into the glass. At oh the my glass god! Cover? Yeah. They, whoa. Yeah. They, they have her in there. They have a bunch of them, and they just use I think it's zombie sounds. I have seen that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It was glorious. It was yeah. glorious. Let's, you know what? Let's fucking talk about Karens. I'm yeah. Talk, you Let's, know, okay. How, full frontal assault. Full frontal assault. Now, one of the things we, we did say here, and we did decide that we're going to be pretty open and honest, and we, we're going to speak our minds. Yeah. I mean, uh, all of the podcasts that I watch and have ever watched are – uh, from stand-up comedians, and they are because they are comedians, they can kind of get away with saying certain things, and it's like, you know, no one thinks twice because one, it's their job to be funny, but two, you already know, you already get a sense of what they talk about and how far they're willing to go from their comedy, yeah. and usually the people that that watch your podcast know their comedy, so they can kind of go there and not have to worry about it, and people are kind of on the same same page so you know my idea of a podcast is that is just you know doing some shit talking complaining talk you know talk about whatever you know yeah yeah i think i feel the same way i mean look i've i've been a guest on a lot of podcasts i've never really been a co-host of one so this is exciting for me yeah um but i i always feel like i always go on and Again, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. It's absolutely not a complaint. I go and talk about movies. I, I talk about movies a lot. Not yeah, of movies, course. Movies. Not that's a different movies. Is like movies. Kind of that's thing. part of a yeah. It's part of part a movie. Of movies though. But I it, I like. I mean, I'm as big a fan as music. Uh, weed is a, an amazing topic. Uh, politics yeah. is an amazing topic. And you kind of don't, you rarely get the chance to really hit on some of those things. I mean, well, we, you can always talk to Kevin Smith. But, like, uh, it, I, yeah, I wanted to talk more about just, I don't want to just talk about movies sometimes. And that's, I think that's, yeah. we found that kind of, I mean, you're an actor. You know, you, you you're I am. act. Uh, you're very talented um, from what I've seen. Uh but I feel like you also, you know, we we met. Do, do should we say how we met? Do you want? Uh, uh yeah. Okay. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. So <laughs> I I I work at a coffee shop. Uh, I won't name names, but it rhymes with schmarschmucks. <laughs> is that what it is? Oh, Smart, okay. yeah. Schmarschmucks, or fart fucks. Bar fucks. That's fart fucks. We could yeah. That's what a lot of the customers are. Oh, gee. A bunch of fart fucks. Bunch of Kar- a bunch of Karen-ass fart fucks. How are, okay, on a daily basis, on a daily basis, how many times do you have to say, will you put on a mask? Every day. Every day. Every day. Multiple times a day. Do you, how often do they say no? Luckily, uh, every time that I've had to say to someone or every time that I've been working... <clears throat> Everybody's very compliant. Okay. E- even if, you know, people don't necessarily believe in it, you can tell that they at least understand that um, I need to have one in a business. Mm-hmm. So, which is nice. Um, well, we are in LA and that, that's a little 
that's a little that helps a lot because a lot. I've seen uh, how people are in public with all this shit in other parts of the country, and it is infuriating. It also reminds me of my hometown, which is sad. But yeah. um, what we're we talking about? Oh, smart box, and uh, yeah. So it, luckily, people are kind of understanding, but people. <sighs> It's, it's gotten to the point to where it's exhausting. It's exhausting to have to constantly rem- remind people, like teach people human fucking decency. Like, so I, I don't know if you've been to like a cafe recently, but mm. our mobile order station. So normally in a, in a corona world, we'll have a mobile order station where people who order ahead, we put it on a little special little shelf or whatever. I know that shelf. And then you do, and uh, people can just come in, look for their stuff, and grab it and go. But because uh, there's a pandemic going on, and uh, you know it's not good to just be touching everything right now, or ever for that matter, but um, we have it set up to where the shelf is facing us. We have the little plastic barriers, and we have signs blocking off this mobile order station. And people will still, like, reach their hand under the barrier and, like, feel around and, like, look at the cups. And you have to be like, hey, we'll grab it for you. Like, if it's hard to get, that probably means that you're not meant to get it. You think? Yeah. Yeah. You know the big glass that's up, like, around all the, you know, espresso machines and all that shit? We had like the stop sticks kind of set up behind there and people would like reach over the glass. And it's like, once again, look how you're like pinching your armpit to get this fucking thing. That probably means that you're not supposed to get it that way. Why don't you ask? And so you constantly every day, I'm like, we'll grab those for you. And people are like, oh, I'm sorry, as they're still fucking grabbing their shit. And you're like, whatever. Yeah, I, 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 I don't get how you can put up with this. I, I, I don't I, – look, I, and I, so really quickly, let's – we met at Starbucks, and we yes. for some reason just became friends really easily. Uh, but it was one of those moments where I treat people – I try to be nice to people, period. Whether, if they're as nice you to should me, be, I'm, yeah. Yeah, simple yeah. as that. It's, it's, a, it's my golden rule. Be nice to others if they're nice to you. Someone's a dick to me. I try to just avoid them because there's yeah. nothing to be gained on that. But, like, it frustrates me to no end to be in a store. Look, look I'm not – I'm guilty of this, too. I've, I've gotten pissed at someone who's worked at a Burger King and I hit my hat. Uh, I've gotten hit pissed at somebody. But I'll, I'll be honest with you. Once this shit happened, once COVID happened – and I, I didn't do it all. I would rather be nice to somebody and say, hey, oh, my – or I never get mad when my order's wrong. That, mm-hmm. I, that doesn't piss me off. That doesn't – I only get annoyed when someone's absolutely rude or they're belligerent, and that rarely happens. Yeah. But with this pandemic, dude, I, 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 ha- I went to Burger King, and I had the worst fucking time with the person behind the counter. And, and all I could think of is like, you know what? They're not fucking happy. Because they're fucking doing a job that they don't really want to be doing right now, and they don't want to be touching people. They do. so I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to be a dick to this person. I'm not going to do that. And it, that, but you see it firsthand. You're on the battlefield. I mean, you you were working. You hardly were closed at all, right? Like what, two weeks or something total? What do you mean? Uh, a Starbucks, the one you work at. Did I? Did I what? It, was it closed like for it was oh no it was it, it was closed for a month was it a month yeah oh shit Actually, oh shit okay okay but so has has it changed at all has it gotten better are people i mean how are people reacting well i mean business is better um but people people for the most part when they come in they it's they do little you kind of have to teach yourself to let little shit go some people even though it's totally justifiable to like enforce it but little things like for some reason 
And a lot of people do this. They do this thing where they, they pull out their, they're at the register, they pull out their phone and they look at their phone to like get their, you know, Starbucks card ready or something, whatever. Mm-hmm. But they take off their mask or pull their mask down to look at their phone almost to be like, let me get this mask out of my way. Hold on. <laughs> so I can, yeah. So I can look at my phone and at, Every time I think about just being like, because we've had, again, we've had to do this numerous, endless amounts of times where we're like, can you please put your mask back on? Like, or pull it up. Can you please pull it up? We've had to say that too. It's it's like, I don't, what don't you get about this concept? We have a regular come in, this woman, she wears a net on her face. That's her mask. It's like a it's like a regular imagine the mask that you wear, a regular fucking mask, like cloth mask, but it's like it's like a fucking end of a tablecloth kind of looking. It, it's like it's got like little diamond cut out holes all across the mask. She's she's wearing a net on her face. And it's like I don't know, she comes in there with her kid and I'm like why do people like you reproduce? And and it's like it, it's like what do you not get about this concept where it's a barrier between your mouth and the world? Cutting holes in that isn't going to do anything whether you believe in it or not. Like, Wow. That just, yeah, that, that kind of shit. I don't get it. You know, you know it's, there's a, you know, the, you know, the Karen that pisses me off, the one that really pisses me off. I don't know her name. I don't want to know her name. I don't need to know her name. But she's the one that does... Because these people know what they're doing. They know what they... They want to cause a scene. Yeah. And she walks into... And look, I, she, whatever their beliefs are, whatever. I'm not even talking about that. I just... I'm talking about the people that, are, that do it to get attention or whatever for their cause. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's one that does it and she goes in and she's like, um, but in terms of spirit, but but um, you're violating my rights, and and but um, and she she tries to be really nice about it, and her but 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 but, and you're just like, you know, we know what you're doing. Yeah, you're just trying to get this. You're trying to, and she says the same thing. And she's done this like two or three times, and it's the same woman. And you're just like, do you need a fucking life? You because you you. First of all, you're harassing people that are just trying to do their fucking job. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. not, you know, it's not like, these are not decision makers. No, they're not forward thinkers either. No, no. Yeah, it's the worst time, it's the worst time ever right now to be in customer service. Oh my God. I, I mean, customer service is bad enough, but it's. Yeah, it sucks yeah. anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, and, but here's the thing. I give, seriously, dude, and this sounds really cheesy, but, like, I give you guys, anyone out there who was working, having to work, whether it was fucking Arby's or Starbucks or yeah. Taco Bell or, of course, like, medical offices and stuff like that, I give so fucking much props. And I've told you this, and I, even though we've never met. Um, yeah. I, I told you, I, I, I would always say, like, it, it amazes me that you have the patience because I I'll give you, I'll praise you right now. Like you, this guy, you want to get a coffee from his perfect guy, just the nicest, great service, amazingly eat. And I've seen you deal with people that are assholes and you deal with them really well. And it's, it's admirable because you're, I'm, I'm wanting to shut up. No, yeah. Yeah. You know, but you, you, there's a lot of patience there, but fuck man, I, I, I don't understand that. I don't understand belittling. Oh, and my favorite, I've been obsessing about these. But I'm the rage guy tonight. Fuck. <laughs> um, I, I've, been, I've been obsessing with these Karen videos. I've been watching a bunch of them. I, I, I actually had to stop. I, I, I get to a point I just stop because I, I get so angry. And, and it, Yeah. And, yeah, you just, that, that kind of rage for things that are just... Yeah, and then, and I don't know about you, but, like, I'll, I'll see shit like that. It'll upset me. And then, like, I, I imagine myself uh, having an encounter with him. And then next thing I know, I'm, like, yelling in my apartment to nobody over a situation that's not happening. 
and you're like, I need to calm down because now yeah. I'm like, now I'm worked up. I'm sweaty over nothing. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I, which speaking of what you said earlier, that's another special slow lane of society. The people that uh, want to say it's an issue of their rights. Dude, yeah. nobody loves their rights more than white trash. Oh I mean, goodness, it's yeah. unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that uh, kind. It's 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 interesting. It, we're in an interesting time, and these. I don't know if they're just afraid of becoming a minority. I don't know if they're afraid of. Uh, it's you know it, this lack of intelligence, this lack of kind of awareness. What, awareness. But what bothers me is that a lot of them, you know, they use the religion. No, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I'm like Christians usually care about people. I, look, I'm 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 not. I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in much. I, I, yeah. I, and I, but I I also think you know I will never. I would never attack someone because they they were a Christian or they're, because they're a Baptist or because they're. You know, no, of course not. So. You know who you know who is going to do that though? A Christian. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. They'll they'll bash any any other religion. I'm like, you know, whatever. Someone says, oh, well, my God, well, which God is yours? Because there's like 350. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know the exact number. I'm not that smart, but you know, it's it's a tricky thing. And yeah, it's I don't. You know, they 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 throw the Bible verse to show their Christianity and. I just, I feel like I know which side Jesus would be on right now. You know? Uh, yeah. It's uh, that whole, I, I guess, biblical thing. It, it's like, it's a giant game of, uh, um, fuck, what is it? Telephone. Uh, yeah. By the time, by the time I got down here and into the year 2020, it, it, it means nothing now. Yeah. yeah, it's just turned into it's it's just an excuse for people to be pieces of shit. Yeah, you know, well, I, I here's a, here's what I wonder though, is that the whole kind of well, the the idea that you can um and I, I I'm not even saying this to be an asshole. I'm really not. It's more like I'm just curious. I wonder if a lot of times people who are are religious will think, well, I can go to a confession and I can you know. I get forgiven for my sins, which is cool. I mean, that's awesome. But I almost wonder for some, if that makes it, well, I can just, I'll just get a confession so I can just rape, kill and murder and, and do horrible yeah, things. It, yeah. I just, you know, I wonder if they, it's used as an excuse, you know, that, and, and that's kind of bothers me because I feel like a lot of atheists or a lot of people who aren't necessarily super religious will be like, well, I just want to be a decent person. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to live with it. Look, I'm not saying all atheists are amazing. Obviously, there's some, there's fucking assholes on, yeah. Oh yeah. The entire equator. I like how that looks, by the way. It looks really cool. I hope, I hope that, <laughs> good for you. But uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. It's a weird, um, it's a tough subject too. And you and I agree on a lot of this. Yeah, yeah, what of are, course. What are you? I mean, do you? What are you? What were you raised? What were you? Born? Oh, I was raised uh, very Christian. I like it really? again. It, it, my mom speaks a lot about religion, but I, I mean, she's always lived her life. However, so that's why it was always kind of strange to me because I'm like, she would bring up Jesus out of nowhere, and I'm like, you fucking do everything. What do you, you do? All this shit wrong. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, not that she's a bad person by any means, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I got you. You know, I remember being a little kid, she was like, um, you should never take the Lord's name in vain, like say God damn or anything like that. I'm like, you say that every day. What are you talking about? I think I even called her out on it, like as a child, and she didn't like that, but. Oh, God, I probably um, didn't. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I was, I, I was raised kind of in a general sense. A Christian, but I don't know. I, I just don't really. I don't subscribe to any of it now. And it's not even necessarily that I'm an atheist. I'm just sort of indifferent 
It's like that's that's over there and I'm over here. So whatever it is, cool. You know, I dated a girl that was uh, Norse pagan. Oh. Okay. So so she followed um, very heavily like all the paganism things and and because it was Norse pagan, like her heaven is literally Valhalla, and uh, so and it was weird to to listen to that and and sort of explore that belief and it's and honestly it's pretty cool but yeah yeah i I just it's like okay that's your thing just don't don't be don't be too much about it and don't try to push it on me and we're good well ultimately i think that's religion faith all of that should be personal yes ultimately it should be it should be a personal thing and it you know, again, I, we're not bashing here. It's not, I don't. I don't feel like either either you nor I are is bashing, but it's. It, it does bother me the judgmentalness. The judgmentalness. I'm making up words. The judgmental <laughs> nature of it, and I, and I think that happens a lot with it, extreme religion. I mean, it's it, there's an. You know, and it, it, it's sad because I think a lot of times people that have that are just really in need of love or something i don't know if there's something missing in their life I, I don't know i don't know i'm not a doctor i don't know in, what the fuck i'm saying right now but yeah I, it, it fascinates me that that people could be so cruel to each other i don't understand that. yeah yeah and 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 that's sort of it even experiences at work where someone is just such an outrageous asshole i am i am i'm surprised when i know i shouldn't be and i think it's just because there there once it hits a certain level i literally can't fathom doing that to a person in any situation or feeling that way feeling the need to do that and uh yeah it's it's ba- it's it's as baffling as it is infuriating yeah yeah and i and i, I i'm looking at the, the beauty of using zoom is we have we can like communicate to each other like he he tells me all the time how pretty i am which is really sweet it's true. Really sweet. Thank you. Uh, but right now, so the this evening began with this is the first time I've seen you for a bit, and um, I, I I happened to notice your sweater, and he's wearing this lovely pink hoodie, not a sweater, a hoodie, and I I, I was thinking, and I, I was just like, very few dudes could pull off like this and i think dude you do a good job oh thank you yes thank you it probably matches the um it probably matches my skin tone but um (laughs) (laughs) it definitely does but that's fine um yeah i mean like i was saying earlier it's the polar opposite of what the rest of my wardrobe is it's you know which is black and gray so it's nice to add a little to spruce it up a little bit and you know I, I've become certainly a lot more confident and and sure of myself in recent years, so I don't even think twice about wearing pink. And it also helps that I live in LA, so where any style is accepted, really. You know, even if you see some crazy shit, you're like, yeah, it's LA. You know, yeah. So, so I, I, I it's it's more stylish for me i guess even if even if it's a in a pretty basic way well okay this is a dumb question but what what, what was the decision making factor did you or just like hmm, pink sweater pink pink i'm gonna i'm gonna take the hoodie i'll take the pink hoodie i think it's it's the same way i get into a number of other things where at first uh i'm doing it ironically like isn't it crazy that i'm wearing pink right now and then I slowly start to discover that, like, oh, I'm not doing it ironically. I'm doing it because I, I like it. You know, it's it's the same way um, the first time I bought a Britney Spears T-shirt. I was like, wouldn't it be funny if, like, I'm a dude wearing a Britney Spears T-shirt? Now I own three Britney Spears T-shirts. And I love all of them. Those yeah. Like. Yeah. I'll wear yeah. it on the next episode. We're one oh, of please them. Do. Please yeah, do. Yeah. And, and it's because, oh, I I like Britney Spears. I have since I was a little kid. You know, I had that. Um, uh, one baby, one more time. Yeah. yeah, I had that album. I still have it, and so it's like, I yeah, I'm I'm a Britney Spears fan, and so I'm wearing it ironically. It's the same way I got into death metal too. I had a couple death metal songs, and I'm like, isn't it hilarious that I'm listening to this crazy shit that sounds 
almost uh, this sounds intelligible now i openly love death metal I, I i listened to it because i secretly liked it but it wasn't cool to like so i'm like oh it's just ironic you know no i'm a death metal fan for sure okay yeah no i think the the important thing is what you're saying and this is absolutely true you have to be able to just like what you want to like exactly yeah to that yeah. point where I, I I admittedly I love Rihanna. Yeah. I I'm not talking. Yes, she's beautiful. Yes, she's gorgeous. I'm talking her music. I love Rihanna. So like, and I know a lot of it's not cool to like Rihanna. I I don't give a fuck who it's cool to like. I just mm. don't. If it's a sound that I I love and sing. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's. It gets silly. You don't know why. You just—it's something you connect. You're not supposed to be doing junk like that. Um, but yeah, it's a. I, I, once you get to that point in your life, and I think there's a lot. I, I can imagine not liking someone like in high school when someone you wear a concert shirt, and someone's like, Ew, "You like that?" Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a terrible thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I like the pink. I like it. I'm good with it. Yeah, I, I certainly, and I fully intend to add more pink to my wardrobe. So I, I, I have a pair. I could do. I could pull that off for sure. I um. I, I have a pair of pink socks. They're actually Fight Club socks, and oh, um, that's cool. That's and cool. Uh, I wear them at work. You know, I wear those like cuffed jogger jeans all the time, so people can see my socks. I get complimented every time that I wear those pink socks. I think I've seen the pink socks. Probably. I feel like I've seen them. Yeah, I think I, I'm pretty sure I have. Uh, yeah, it's um. Funnily enough, we have hoodies, not wearing pants because I'm wearing shorts. We don't need to get in that. But so okay, something that we were talking about is somehow acid reflux came up. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. What the, what the fuck? What were we talking about? We were talking about um, uh, my mom's uh, cigarette smoke smell would come through my vent and it would oh. wake me up and it would, it would trigger my acid reflux and how my acid reflux has gotten a lot worse as I get older. Uh, so, yeah, because I, I had acid reflux. I used to get – how long did you – and you still have it or no? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, I, I wonder why because my acid reflux – because I was a really big guy for a while. I was, uh, I, I, I was around 350 pounds. Wow. So it was, yeah, it was. Um, we'll talk about that's a whole other subject to talk about later, and I'll talk about how I, how I lost weight and all that. But um, once I lost the weight, um, the acid reflux was gone. Like I, I didn't mm. have the, actually a big part of it was the soda. When I quit soda, I started. Yeah, to that's always a good soda? place to start for anybody. Yeah, do you drink soda or no? Um, I if I do, it's it's always either like the zero sugar ones, like not necessarily diet ones. Uh, the uh, uh, business of zero sugar sodas has come a long way, and uh, you know, like the Coke Zero Sugar, and they just came out with like a Zero Sugar Mountain Dew. I enjoy them. I love the fact that I live in an age where I can enjoy these guilt-free, or at least for the most part, guilt-free. I still stay away from it, but yeah, like they still have a lot of crap in it. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. But I, I enjoy it every now and then. But yeah, when I was a kid, I, I drank it all the time. Oh yeah, I was a I was a huge soda drinker for I think most of my life. So I, I think that has a lot to do with you know honestly it has a lot to do with gaining weight. The first thing I did was quit drink, like you said, quit the drinking soda. I lost like 30 pounds. This was wow. like in just a short amount of time just doing that. But I had acid reflux, which another issue I had, I used to get sleep paralysis when I was heavy. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. It was the weirdest fucking thing. And it, if you've ever, have you had sleep paralysis? No, no, it sounds awful though. It's it, it's like it's I have such a I have such a legitimate fear of it though. 
it's uh it's not fun because you literally I, look i i sleep the way i sleep is like an enchilada because i'm just like <laughs> i don't like i know because of watching too many horror movies as a kid i i, I know there's someone under the bed gonna grab my leg or oh okay shit like that and i i just it's this weird mental block in me and i i find myself um you know, I would, I wrap myself up. So I don't see, like, I, I know friends, I have friends that have sleep paralysis and they'll like see someone crawling in the window and like sitting on their <laughs> chest or, or just looking at their face. But, but I, I, what I do get, it's like someone is next to me and I can hear them mm -hmm. and they're like, <sighs> like breathing. And it's like, I mean, to, from when you're in that position, it's like there's some motherfucking thing right next to me and it's breathing and I can feel it. I can hear it. But all it is, is, I mean, some people, I mean, depending on, there's people that do believe that you somehow find another dimension or something. I don't mm -hmm. really subscribe to that. But I, I do believe that um, what, it, what it does is, you're kind of hearing the the your own breathing. It's just exemplifying and, and, and oh, yeah. bigger and louder and and so I, I feel like that's a lot of where that came from for me. But dude, oh my fucking god! Yeah, you don't want to. You don't have sleep. You don't want to have sleep. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. No, I mean I I hear about. It. I also one thing that like I think similar to that 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 scarred into my brain was um uh anest anesthetic awareness where um you basically like if you're going under for surgery or something um your body is asleep but your mind is awake like it's it's sort of like a misfire in the sedative so like your brain is still on but your body's still like you can't move but you're seeing everything happening to you. So if you're getting like a big surgery, you'll see everything. And I think you feel it said that you feel it too, but like wow. your body is paralyzed. It's, it's under the sedative. So like you can't scream, you can't move, you can't, but like you're feeling everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think I've heard of that. That's, hey, yeah. That's a, yeah, that's not a fun, that's, that's not a fun thing. I don't think. I have I have seen a horror. They've used that in horror films as well, too. So I'll I'll let you know which movies you should watch. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't like horror mo movies as much as I do, which is no, definitely not. Weirdo, goddamn weirdo. Goddamn I can't. Weirdo. I am a raging pussy. Uh, that, see, well, that makes me want to watch a movie with you, which we will do when this shit's over. I want to, yeah. you know, yeah, go into that that our our, our places and uh, watch. Um, and I'm, I'm figuring out the movie I want you to see. I want to see something. I want you to see. I got to figure out what scares you, and then I'll know what movie to show. Okay. So All I right. can freaking terrify you. I used to. I, I love that love freaking people out um i had a i had a scary thing happen today yeah, okay it was terrifying um so i had the uh the uh, phone ring and uh, and census lady came back. she came back and I, this i i've been she keeps coming back i, I i'm an apartment manager so i you know, I take care of a bunch of apartment. Well, I don't do it really yeah. that much, but uh, she keeps coming back because she keeps having to figure out, well, what, why were these people gone? I don't understand it. I don't. But I, I actually said um, she started asking me some of the questions, and I was really bothered. Like, by, she's like, "Oh, what, what, what was their um, ethnicity?" And I'm like, "Why, why do they need to know that again? <laughs> I don't, I don't get that." But I, I wasn't rude, but it was just like this is like third or fourth time I've dealt with this person. Yeah. And they keep coming back. Like, stop. And, and, and every time they're like, oh no, we're good. This is all the information we need. But they keep coming back. And I look, I 
for full on pro census, gay census, go for it. But like, it's driving me crazy. Yeah, I um, that actually worries me that that they might come back because I had an experience tonight actually. So what? I was, I had five <laughs> at nine p.m. Mine was eight, dude. Oh now, yeah. Tell me what 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 the fuck happened? So, so I'm I'm in the middle of streaming. So I'm like two or three hours into streaming, and um, I have this this thing on my on my uh, wall by the door. It's like a little buzzer thing, so people outside of the complex can like buzz you, and there's like a little microphone thing. It's 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 kind of that whole thing, and um, but it, it's not even like a buzz. It's like this annoying tone that goes off, and. Uh, the past couple of weeks, it's been it's been going off almost every day at, at, in the morning, and it, it wakes me up. And they just keep doing it and keep doing it. And I'm like, I don't look. I'm not expecting any like packages or anything. Like, there's no reason why anybody would need me right now. And anybody around here that I know, they have my phone number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't need to do that shit. So I'm like, I'm just gonna ignore it, and eventually they'll stop. Well. And I've had I've had census people come to my door, and I'm like, ah, I'm kind of busy. And then they go away. Um, but tonight, so in the middle of streaming, about eight thirty, I hear the buzzes, and I'm like, what the fuck? And now I'm like nervous because I'm like, it's eight thirty at night. Well, who's trying to get into my complex and and get me? Like, this is this is crazy. So I, I just ignored it. They stopped, and then at nine at night. I hear knocking on my door and I'm like, what the f are you fucking kidding me? And I'm like trying to look through the peephole, but it's like super dirty and shit in there. So I can't see anything. And, and I, I open the door and I fucking, he's where he's like, Oh, hello. And it takes me one second. I see this lanyard that he has around his neck and it says yeah. census. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it is nine o'clock at night. It is nine o'clock at night. I could yeah. be like trying to go to bed right now or some shit. And you're in here buzzing my fucking apartment, knocking on my door, wanting to do this bullshit at nine o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Call it a day. Call it a day. Oh my God. You know, oh and God. also you've been sitting, you've been waiting around here for 30 fucking minutes until eventually you somehow snaked your way into my complex and knocked on my fucking door. <laughs> At what point do you just go, I'll, I'll try tomorrow or something, you know? What the Probably fuck are you doing? tries a lot, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and look, I, I was warned I was warned that if you don't fill out the census thing, they are very persistent. And I, yeah. even though I was warned, I grossly underestimated it. Yeah. And, and so I, I'm like still just my head peeked out of the door answering all the questions because he was slick with it. He didn't. He didn't go, do you have a moment? He just immediately the questions. And I'm like, before I know it, I'm answering him and I'm doing the fucking survey. So um, I get through it and he goes, oh, perfect. I think that's all we need. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, th thanks. I had to stop my fucking stream like in the middle. And I had a good amount of viewers, which, and, and this is another thing. I found this out afterwards. Um, uh, a friend of mine who uh, uh, is the, a moderator of my stream so she kind of like oversees the chat and everything and makes sure everything is uh you know not crazy make sure everyone's following the rules not being a dick and um she called me afterwards and she was like hey just so you know uh your microphone still picked up the conversation between you and the guy and you were giving out like where you live and shit <laughs> and i'm like thank you for telling me that now i need to delete that video so no one can fucking oh have God. all of my information just because this guy wanted to show up at nine o'clock at night and do this census. Oh, oh my God. So that's a shit. You said you had a weird fucked up day. Yeah. Oh my God. Shit. Dude. Yeah. That's, that's so how, but so how much of that air to so people, how many people did you like? A lot it was like five or six people. I'm, I'm oh, still, okay. uh, Still very small and up and coming, but well, um, you're very tough. Let, let's you know, fuck it. Let's say we're streaming, dude. 
Like, okay. see, I, I don't know a lot about streaming, and I remember when you, you kept talking about, oh, I go on Twitch, and, and I knew, I had heard of Twitch, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't really yeah. get it. I, and I, so, yeah, you got me on Twitch. I'm on Twitch, too. I was going to check you out when we started talking about doing this. I, it so fascinates me because you tell, – tell our, tell our two people listening how much time you do this and what you do. So, uh, so yeah, so I, I stream video games on uh, Twitch. Video games? Video games. Video games. I love those. Uh, okay. Twitch.tv slash Justin underscore butts, B-U-T-T-S. Um, so, yeah, I, I stream video games. I'm, I'm, I guess, what you would call a variety streamer. I don't stick to one game or one type of game. I just stream whatever I feel like playing. And um, I... Uh, what were the questions that you wanted to know? Well, yeah, what, what, how did you decide? I mean, I guess, how did you decide to do that? And when did that become a thing for you? Um, it's something I had done like a few times um, years ago. And, and I'd always known what it was and I'd always liked it and, and sort of been intrigued by it. And then coronavirus happened and I'm quarantined, uh, you know, for months and barely working and I have all this time on my hands and um, I just decide, you know, it, it's, it's a creative outlet in a way, you know, since uh, there's really no acting work right now. Um, so it's, it's something to sort of still, I guess, perform in a way. Because, I mean, yeah, you're generally comment, you know, commentating on the game and maybe interacting with chat, but you have to be sort of like, on you know what i mean so um or at least if you want to be entertaining and worth following that's what you do some people don't really talk or do anything and it's like yeah there's a thousand streamers streaming any game that you can think of what's going to keep them there and make them follow you is your personality they're not following the game they're following your personality mm -hmm. so i always try to keep that in mind and sort of you know make sure there's very little dead air and, you know, I'm interacting with everyone in chat and I'm making jokes, trying to make it, you know, fun for everyone, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you so I do that. Uh, I try to do it at least every other day. Um, I am starting to work a little bit more now, so I'm kind of – sometimes I'll go maybe two days at most. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, there's times where I'm back-to-back -back days streaming. Um the shortest stream I'll do is maybe three hours, and I've had I've had some that have been almost eight hours. So it just really depends on the the momentum of it, what game you're playing. So. Eight hours, man. That's that is. Ins I mean, look, I I and I've seen you do it. I I I I, I, I hunkered down and I I watched part of it. I I couldn't do the whole like three four hours, but I was like. You do good. It's it's fun to watch. You you you're engaging. It's it's yeah. It's, it, it is it is more interesting than I thought it would be. Yeah. You know, it's not definitely not my thing. You know, I'm not a gamer uh, as much as you are. Uh, but it, it, it's fun to watch, and I, I highly recommend if you're a gamer, go go check my boy Justin out. It's it's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, twitch.tv slash Justin underscore butts. Stream streaming a lot these days during these uh, strange times. Yeah, if you do um, the shark one, maybe I'll watch. I like the shark game. Oh, that was actually, I've I've already done that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would join in, man. Yeah. Maybe, is there? If, would you do like Friday the Thirteenth or something? I do have that game. I, I I could I could play it. Well, you have to play that one with people. Though. Yeah, but I'm sure they have like you can just join random lobbies. Yeah, that's yeah you can do that. Yeah, uh, if you do that, dude, I'll watch the whole thing. Oh yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let okay. you know. Okay. Well, yeah, maybe good. I can do it like sometime around Halloween. I already have a lot of scary Halloween games planned. Oh okay, that's gonna be cool. That's gonna be awesome. I like that. Oh Jesus, this is this is we we've, we've done it. We did it. Yeah, we did it. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel like I feel like this is going to be easy, but in the in like you know, in a good way, as it should be. It it feels as easy as it should be. 
Yeah, and I, look, who, whoever is out there listening to us, and, and if we don't edit this part out, uh, <laughs> I, I I feel like uh, you know, chime in, uh, let us know what, what you're into, what you're thinking, what we could talk about. Just don't be an asshole. That, that, that's, that's no yeah. assholes. I mean, I, I we we both, you and I, both deal with our own assholes, and I, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. fuck that shit. I don't have time for that shit. You know, let's keep it cool. Let's keep it clean. You can be. You don't have to agree with us, but you know. Yeah. Know. Yeah, but uh, you know, I. Uh, but again, it's it's a lot of people have the same gripes as we do, or at least they can they can relate. So, I think that's. Yeah, I think that's what part of what sells it. And again, okay. Again, let's. Uh, so, Justin, I want to thank you. Um, for joining me on this adventure yeah yeah it's uh we're we're breaking new grounds here and and i've always wanted to have a, a good excuse to have a podcast and now and now i have one i am the co-owner of one and uh yeah it'll be interesting to see where it goes and yeah. and what people think of us in our uh scattered conversations Yes, very scattered, and but you know, again, it's uh, join us, and, and and you know, we will will actually respond to people that want to talk about stuff. We'll, we'll be cool. You be cool. We be cool. Uh, Justin, where can people find you on Twitter, on Facebook, on whatever you know, whatever those sites? What what do you want to promote? Uh, well, I guess we can uh, the easiest one, if you haven't heard already. Uh, oh, gee, you can I wonder. You can uh, you can follow your boy on Twitch, uh, Twitch TV slash Justin underscore butts b u t t s. Come watch me um, uh, uh, play some video games and maybe get really super pissed off at them. Um, it's always a good time. It's always a good time. Um, good also, fun. you can follow me uh, on Instagram. Uh, that's at uh, Justin Butts ninety four. And, we'll talk uh, about your name later. We'll, we'll, that will be a conversation. Yeah, that's always that's uh, been a pretty hot topic my entire life. So I'm, I'm uh, excited to get into that. It'll be a whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and of course, you can find me. You can find me at joeblow.com. You can find me at arrowinthehead.com. You can find my show Sounds Scary on Viddy Space and Twitter. Uh, mostly, I just go by Jimmy Jimmy to the O Instagram. All of that. I'm everywhere. So, yeah, find me. Join me. Join us. All right, brother. Until All right, next cool. time. Until next time. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see y'all next time. That was good. <laughs>